Hello YouTube world, this is Johnny Mo. We're in the middle of the third quarter. How's your year going? You say third quarter, what are you talking about? Here's what I'm talking about. April, May is the first. June, July is the second. August, September is the third. October, November is the fourth. Now, give you a little tip. If you want to go into overtime, this is what I... See, I like the sports analogy in in business. I'm like a sports guy, so I kind of... That's how I do my stuff. So if you want to go into overtime and go into the snow removal, now's the time to start looking at it. Oh, we got a business call. Let's see who it is. Missouri. It's probably another one of you YouTube freaks calling me. <laughs> I tell you what though. Uh, if you're thinking about getting into snow removal, you definitely want to start looking at, start getting plow prices. Now um, the plow places are starting to do their early ordering and you want to go and you want to start looking through that. And this is all overtime. This is overtime money, baby. Another thing that's coming up. Also, if you're looking into locking up some accounts, this is the time to start locking up snow plowing accounts. Don't wait two weeks before because all the good stuff's been gone. If you're going to make money in snow plowing, you've got to be able to have the ability to salt. You've got to have a three-quarter ton truck. My opinion, you know... <clears throat> You say, well, Johnny, why do you need a three-quarter ton nut? Because of the hauling factor, you goofball. Because if you're going to salt, you need to be able to haul. You know, you can, you can, I can, a three-quarter ton truck, I can actually get it stickered as a one ton. So I can put more salt in the back. And that's what you need. If you're going to make money, you know, if you want to go out and throw a blade on the front of your truck, that's different. Do some driveways, a few parking lots. But when you want to make money in the snow plowing business, you got to put a salter out the rear end of that truck. That's where the money's made. Because once you plow the lot and you salt the lot, bada bing, bada boom. Woo, baby. Johnny Moe did for you, baby. We're giving you the sinks already about snow. And it's still 90 degrees here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, we're in the third quarter. Now, I, I've stressed to you the, the importance of um, getting your winter fund in by next week. So it'll be Labor Day. Now, I want you to leave in the comment section. Say, listen, Johnny, I've listened to you, and I've got my winter fund. And I'm, so you know what? The Johnny most salute to you, baby. Whew. You got your win. You listened. You're going to make it through the winter now. See, everything else uh, after... After Labor Day is all profit for you by because you've you've got everything you've got all your winter fund now you just got money coming in and now you can start planning buy some stuff for snow removal do some different things you know take a vacation do what you need to, need what you need to do now we're dead smack middle of third quarter we've only got about three months left before this is all wrapped up so make sure you got your money because three months isn't a lot of time. Especially when the work starts running out. See, what happens around here is generally when school starts to come back into session for the uh, fall season, that's when people start kind of, they start closing their pool. They stop, you know, worrying about the bushes and the mulch and, ah, save it for next year. So this is why it makes it a little bit harder outside of mowing to get more work to finish off strong. So everything you got on the books, you need to get it because people just really don't care anymore. You know, when they're out in the summer, they're outside all the time. They're in their pools. They're driving around top down. They're looking at things. Hey, I want this done. I want that done. But it kind of fades off now. And once the sweatshirts start coming, people tend to stay inside a lot more. They don't, they're not coming out as much. So stuff outside is not seen. And they're kind of like in the house. Whoa, these are some awesome tips. You talk about marketing, baby. Woo! That's why you got to have that money in the bank before Labor Day. Woo, baby! Some awesome tips here. Uh, you know, talking about the third quarter. We're dead square. Now, right now. Now, right now. And I mean now, right now is a good time to take a look at your business to see where it's at. How are you doing? How did you do this year? Take a look at the numbers. Run a profit loss. Make sure you have everything you need to have. Do the whole nine. That way, you can make an inf an informed decision. See, most guys, they're thinking about, right now, they're thinking about, oh, are we going to get these leaves, you know, mowers. Hey, should we buy another mower? Don't buy another mower now. Come on, season's almost over. You got through this whole season. 
if you're gonna if you're gonna invest in your business, you gotta start thinking about snow removal. If there's snow in your area, you know, think about that realm of things. You know, invest in that area. Put a solder out off the back of your truck. You know, get your stuff going. Let's go. You know, talking about marketing. <clears throat> you know, when you got your name plastered all over the side of your truck, your trailer, and your stuff's pretty clean. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't matter if you have an old truck, as long as it keeps. You're like, oh, Johnny, here you go again with your marketing and that truck. And I don't, I've never put my name on my truck. <clears throat> Listen, guys. When I sit in traffic, and I take a, I, I take a look at at different things, and I'm sitting there, and I see a guy with a nice truck and a nice name on the side, like, wow, that looks nice. If you say that looks nice, that means you're going to take another look. If you look over and there's rust bucket everywhere, you're kind of like, oh, man. You won't remember anything. Well, Johnny, I've got magnets. Get those magnets. Take those magnets. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pull them off, and I want you to throw them. Because <laughs> you can't read them. You know what I mean? You can't. I seen a, I seen a sign the other day. A guy had a magnet on, on the side of his truck. And it was so full. I couldn't even get the number. Listen. Can you read my number? No, you can't read my number. Even. Barely. Even if I'm. Even if I'm just standing still like this. You're like, huh? A business card is cool because you can sit and look at it. Now, when you want to decorate. You know, when you want to decorate. A business card or or uh, a flyer, that's fine because people can actually sit and look at it. It's like, oh, these are the services. He's like this. Look, you can sit and look at all my services. You know, nice business card. Everything looks good. That's fine. But when you're sitting in a truck and you're trying to get someone to, to be, the most important part of the vehicle is the number. So when you're sitting in traffic, people are just sitting there. <sighs> They look, oh, oh, there's a landscape. Oh, it looks like a nice truck. Nice trailer. Oh, you know what? I need some work done. It happens so much. Hey, I, you know, hey, I was, I just seen your truck and trailer downtown. I was giving you a call. Uh, can you give me a call back? I, that's what you want to do. You don't want to put little, why waste money investment in your little magnets? You know, I would rather see you flyer, you know, put money into business cards. <clears throat> The magnets are so small that generally people cannot read the number and you've got so much other information on the magnet that they don't even have time to get to the number if they're reading it. Boy, marketing tip again, baby! Yeah! Get the rust off your truck, throw the magnets away, and get put invest in lettering and get your number real big. You know, I'm going to show you, I'm going to put at the end of this video, I'm going to show you my first truck. My first truck was a Ford F-150, 1999 Ford F-150. Uh, I bought it used, had 18,000 miles on it, and I put new springs on it, and then I lettered it. And this this was, I didn't even have a logo at the time. Uh, I just had a basic, you know, Johnny's mowing, you know, and then my number, and then this huge branding thing that really set me apart from everyone. Because generally, people don't brand their business. You don't have that little catchphrase, like, I have nobody cuts better. Well, you'll see at the end of the video, I'll, I'll give you a shot of it. It was this huge, nobody cuts better right down the side of it. And there's that nobody cuts better guy. And, you know, you go to a development, and my lawns would be all striped up, and I did great work. And, you know, now I don't have to put that nobody cuts better too big. You can see it on the wall right there. Nobody cuts better. And then it's on my shirt right here, nobody cuts better. Um, it's even on my hat, too. Johnny Moe hat, baby. Uh, anyway, you know, some great tips. So I'm going to throw this video down. I'm going to show you my first truck. And even though it was older truck, I sold it. What did I say? I sold it in 2011 when I bought my new one. And you'll see it was um, it was 11 years old. And you'll see that it wasn't rusty. wasn't all, you know, busted out. A lot of those Fords back then rusted. But I kept mine clean, you know, just touch it up, spray a little bit. And you'll see. The original truck that kind of got me started, I had a Ford Ranger before that, and then I had this F-150, and you'll see, you know, keep your stuff looking nice, keep your, keep going, you know, hand out business cards, letter your stuff up, get professional, and you're going to do good. Now, we're right dead square in the middle of the third quarter. I want you to do an analysis on your business right now. Find out how are you doing, what are you doing, what has worked, what hasn't worked. And you know, enjoy the rest of the year. 
you know, don't get so busy that you can't enjoy life. And that's how I'm going to end this video is, you know, I, as I was traveling home from work today, I just looked at people and they're rawr, flying around. Ah, it looked like, look, you know what people look like today is they look like a bunch of people swatting away a whole bunch of flies. You know, ah, you're so busy because they're not really happy. And I want you guys to be happy. And answer is quite, are you happy? And if you're not happy, why aren't you happy?